So a few days ago, I dropped in on coaches, designers, Stuart Vivers to find out what his inspiration was for spring 2015. Take a look. Stuart, okay, first of all, I have to say, congratulations, you've had quite a season. Now, this is your sophomore collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's almost more pressure to do a second collection than the first, in it, a way. It kind of is, but I think the fact that the response was positive, it you know, gives you the confidence to try some new things. Mm -hmm. So, I think I want everybody to look around. We are not <laughs> standing on a deserted road in the middle of a highway, albeit this looks gorgeous, but I assume that this is your big inspiration and that American heritage and sort of the plains of America have sort of really been your inspiration. How would you say that's influenced your new collection for spring 2015? I mean, I guess as a foreigner, I grew up with America through movies. So, you know, that's one of the things I wanted to get with this space was an atmosphere, you know, almost an eeriness, mm -hmm. but something that felt cinematic. Tell me those movies you grew up loving. I want to know if I know them. Definitely um, True Romance, Patricia okay. Arquette, Natasha Kinski in Paris, Texas. And I think Velma from Scooby-Doo was an important- You're kidding. Absolutely Oh my God, not. wait, I'm sorry, no. Wait, <laughs> Paris, Texas has been my inspiration for a lot of uh -huh. fashion shoots, mm -hmm. but the fact that you combine that with Velma. It's like that thing of like something that's familiar, something that has an everydayness, but you know, you can, it's not quite tangible. It's like, there's something quite off there. There's, you know, and that's what I wanted to get across. What would you say are really the out of the ballpark key special things for you for spring? Well, I think there's something about the simplicity and like authenticity of a t-shirt. We played with it a little last season. I think there's um, nothing sexier than a girl in a great t-shirt. I think so. It's that kind of subversion of that and that those mixes that can make it interesting. Okay, Coach has been known for its it bags. Tell me, define the it bag for you. Like what is our it bag that we need to get from Coach this season through Stewart? We've got a bag which we called Coach Swagger. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, I feel like it's going to come out with Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> what is a Coach Swagger? Coach Swagger, you know, it's got that Coach ease, it's got that Coach functionality, it's soft, it's a beautiful pebbled leather. But updated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, sold, I want one. <laughs> I showed up here in a raggedy old bag, so I'm leaving with that one. <laughs> Take one. And joining us now is Susie Lau. Now, you probably know her from her website, Susie Bubble, but Susie's here to help us take a look at the Coach collection for spring 2015. Hi, Susie. Hiya. Hello. I have to point out that Susie and I are actually wearing the same designer this evening. Wait. Our I London understand. darling, Simone Rocha. Okay, that skirt, I don't know if anybody can see, but it's awesome. It's pretty good. Kind of like appropriate for the weather today because it's like kind of slightly rainy. Mm -hmm. And look, look at the, I have to say, okay, so the Coach Collection is playing right now. I love this collection because, you know, he's really sort of redefined what Coach is. I mean, Susie, what would you say that is the essence of Coach through Stewart? I think, you know, Coach, um, sorry, Stuart brings a very kind of British sensibility to to Coach, but, you know, Coach is a very American brand. So, you know, it's kind of like a clash of cultures for me. You know, it's like British quirk with that American sort of classicism that is so inherent in Coach, you know. Um, and I think the Coach customer is going to be super surprised, you know, come next spring to find these, you know, cute cartoon characters, really kind of slightly whimsical way of dressing. And yeah, I think they're going to be pleasantly surprised and I think they'll take to it really well. Those pastel shaggy coats instantly made me think of kind of London style the second that, that I Velma saw them. That was from Scooby-Doo, I have to say, those pastel shaggy coats. Yeah, it was you also think? a little East London, I think. Okay, well, I mean, but, you love a shag. I, mean, I do, I, it, I do love a shag. But that's Thing. it could mean different things for different people mm -hmm. and and that's what makes it kind of kind of in a way versatile even though on the surface you might think it's a little bit kooky but how about he said he loved the t-shirt and I never would have imagined that the t-shirt would be full of cartoon characters you know I always I, I pictured when he told me because I saw him as a preview and he said to me oh wait do you see I love a, a woman in a t-shirt I imagined it to be a really thin delicate beautiful very elegant subtle t-shirt and not a pastel one with a cartoon character mm -hmm, surprise I know surprise but I love it I, I think you know, Coach, I think, is, you know, probably hitting a sort of a young market, you know. There are, like, girls that are going to really, really love this, I think, you know, like uh, aspirational customers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's actually quite clever what they've done, you know, that little collaboration they've done with the artist, Gary mm -hmm. uh, Caseman. Yeah, mm -hmm. very, very cute. And I have to make a prediction. After seeing the Coach presentation, he had those great clogs. And I think that, you know, where socks and sandals were the ugly but chic shoe. <laughs> 
of this <laughs> summer, I think it's going to be the chunky clog that is the the ugly chic shoe of yeah. would you wear spring a clog? 2015. No, I would not. Okay. You still my beating heart. I love a clog. You do? <laughs> yes. Okay, wait. I want to but tell me what else you've loved from this week. What else have you seen in Fashion Week that you've really loved? I just saw Mark by Mark Jacobs today. Again, about another very youthful collection. Mm. Just, you know, hitting a really good sweet spot, you know, like something that is new, familiar, but and fresh all at once. Yeah. The I, Brits I, are taking over. The Brits are kind of taking over. <laughs> they are, but you're biased too. But yes, I, but I'm I, so no, but biased. I look at someone like we talked earlier this morning when we did our show about Alexander Wang. And I feel mm. like, and even Joseph Altazar, that it's becoming a new guard. And like New York fashion has really changed a lot, especially in the last couple of years to really help push the boundaries of what people think American sportswear is, don't you think? For sure. And, you know, Altazara turned out a really beautiful collection, you know, and he's really kind of asserting what he's about. And so is Alex Wang, you know, that those trainer inspired pieces, really technically brilliant, actually. And, you know, it's it's sportswear, but it's not as you know it. Mm -hmm. Is there one American designer that you always go to and say that's the one? I think we're all looking forward to Proenza Schooler showing Always. tomorrow. I just, I, I think they really kind of, you know, game changers, I think, mm -hmm. in New York fashion. I agree with you. I think they are game changers. And I think they're game changers for a new generation. Don't yeah. you think? I think for everybody coming up, they really look to them. I mean, I can't think of one you know, up and coming designer that doesn't reference them in some way. Mm -hmm. They're kind of the new American, you know, yeah. avant garde luxury brand. And they really set the agenda, like, you know, in terms of like even Europe but designers looking at them as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I'm really, really excited for their show. What do you like better, the shows, the shows in New York or the shows in London? Oh, no, that's <laughs> like, you can't because London's my hometown. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. I've, I'm going to. I'm going to say London, okay. but only because it's oh. my hometown. All right. But New York picks us too. New York is up there, don't you think? It's really in the running. New York is up there, and I always come from the beginning to the end, and I try and see everything. And, you know, it's a really fantastic energy. There is this new guard. There's, you know, there's things like Hood by Air mm -hmm. coming up. You know, it's just... You can definitely feel that there is this fresh energy coming in. Okay, well, now we talked about clogs, we talked about the clothes that we loved on the runway, and we talked about normcore hair, sort of a beauty trend. Mm -hmm. But is there something that you're seeing beauty-wise on the runway that you're saying, whoa, I haven't seen that in a while? Um, I can't think. Well, today at Rodate, there were pierced brows, but sort of like a whole row of piercing oh, so like fun. a r whole kind of so like the whole brow like they were stuck on obviously because you know they don't <laughs> have a bazillion holes in the brow but you know i just thought it was really really fresh like it was like you know a piercing but you know Done. Was Twisted. it in a girl with a dragon tattoo kind of way, or was <laughs> not it not at all scary? Because it was then paired with these like mermaid dresses, flowy chiffons, sequins, paillettes. I, you know, I, I thought the whole thing just looked incredible. And oh. yeah, again, they're another set of game changers. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. But I love the idea that piercing can be also elegant and sophisticated, mm -hmm. which you wouldn't normally think. Exactly. But it takes the road darty girls to really show you that. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, so thank you so much for stopping by, Susie. Thank Always love chatting us. with you. It's great to see you. Thank Always. You.